children praying Lord, send your spirit in this place The program you are about to see is one of many from a dynamic group of studies exploring the untapped resources of prayer. These lessons are in-depth studies of the therapeutic and supernatural powers of prayer. Together, we will study methods of prayer proven to be effective for the believer and disciple of Jesus Christ. Now, Dr. Lester Sumrall, speaking on the power that unlocks the treasures of God, prayer. Lord, listen to your children pray. There are things that prayer cannot do, and in studying a tremendous series of 20 lessons in prayer, inevitably we would come to this point. That there is, there is a prayer that cannot be answered. God would not be able to do that because of his own holiness, because of his own moral fiber. And so we must come to this lesson with an open heart and say there are things that God cannot do and that we are the ones that keep God from doing it. In this very special series uh, that we have conducted regarding why I believe in prayer, we began with the greatest source of untapped energy in the universe. You know, it's prayer. If we could teach God's people to pray, we can change the world. If we can organize prayer until we know when we're praying, it'll do something. In countries where they have great revival, like in South Korea and uh, in Indonesia and, and several other lands like Brazil, the, the people, the common people, not the ministers, uh, not the leaders altogether, but the common people, have learned the secret of tremendous prayer. And in this prayer, uh, they are able to see uh, God's deliverance. In these lessons, we have dealt with set laws governing prayer. They are set laws. Prayer is not an incident nor an accident. Uh, prayer has to do with reality. It has to do with doing things right at the right time and in the right way. How Jesus prayed, praying in the Spirit. Uh, there needs to be a lot more taught about how do you receive strength from praying in the Spirit? How do you get answers from praying in the Spirit? It's a great, it's a great thought. Prayer relationship to the Bible. Prayer related to, to fasting. Uh, does it help? Uh, divine healing by prayer. Prayer and divine healing uh, is, is, a great, is a great subject. Prayer in the first church in Jerusalem. An important, you'd have to come to that. Uh, has prayer worked in the church? How, what did it do for the first church in Jerusalem? I believe that you would know that we had to come to that. We have come today to a most essential element in prayer. What prayer cannot do? <laughs> we have been talking at, at great length on what prayer can do. Now, shall we very candidly and open-heartedly say, well, there are things that prayer cannot do. Open your Bibles with me and let us study together from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 18, in verse 10, it says that there were two men who went up into the temple to pray. Two persons went up in the temple to pray. They were one blood. They were both Jews. But spiritually and religiously, they were different. It says one of them was a Pharisee. That you would call him a fundamentalist. He believed in the, in the, in the Torah. He believed in the written word of God. He believed in the prophets. He would be a fundamentalist. And the other was a publican. <laughs> he, he was the town's drunk. Uh, he was a bad fellow. But between the two prayers of those fellows, there was a world of difference. Uh, the Pharisee said, I am a good person. I keep the law. And uh, I'm not even like this publican over here, this dirty guy that's been living bad. But the publican over there beat his breast and said, oh, God, have mercy upon me, a sinner. And Jesus asked the question, which one of them went down satisfied? The one that went up and boasted about himself or the one that went up and with weeping eyes said, God, have mercy upon me, a sinner. There are prayers that cannot be answered. They're prayed the wrong way and they cannot be answered. This Pharisee couldn't get a prayer answered. He was depending upon his own righteousness. He didn't need a savior. The publican, he, he was the worst person. He was a real sinner. But he could get a prayer answered. He says, God, have mercy upon me, a sinner. Ooh, he got that one answered right away. You see, he, the Jesus says he went down justified. He went home justified. A changed man by the power of God, a new creature. 
by the mighty power of God. So he got it. <laughs> yes, there are definitely prayers which cannot be answered. Impossible for them to be answered. They're prayed by the wrong people, the wrong way, at the wrong time, and they cannot be answered. Let's look into it very carefully. You and I have heard a long time God answers prayer. We put it up in little signs in our house, stick them up in our Sunday school rooms. God answers prayer. It's a truthful thing, except there are some prayers that God cannot answer, and we're going to study about that. Uh, we hear about the Jesus who saves, and keeps, and satisfies. They sing about it, and they sing about standing in the shadows. You will find Jesus. That is very true, but you don't hear much preached about the flaming, searching eyes of the Savior of mankind, the one that searches hearts with a two-edged sword protruding from his mouth in the book of Revelation, destroying his enemies. You've got to get the picture straight. And if you're going to see Christ as one that loves, also see him as the judge of the universe because the Bible says that at the great white throne judgment, he is the judge at the great white throne judgment. And if he's the judge there, he'll judge every man according to his deeds. He answers prayer. He wants to answer prayer. Prayer is prayed in order to get an answer, but there are prayers which cannot be answered. In the temple in Jerusalem, there was a gigantic veil that hung between the Holy of Holies and the Holy Place. And in order to get from the Holy Place into the Holy of Holies, it had to be opened with sacrificial blood. And on the day that Christ was crucified and his blood was accepted by God, the, the great veil, a curtain, that separated the holy place from the holy of holies was pulled asunder like that, pulled asunder. And Christ opened the way for us to go into the holy of holies uh, by his sacrificial blood. Uh, do you think for a moment that we dare to enter into the holiness of God with unconfessed sin? You can pray, but if you've got unconfessed sin, your prayers cannot be answered. Do you think that you can go into the Holy of Holies where the sacrificial blood is with hatred in your heart, hating, hating and hating? There are millions of people right now that hate so hard they could kill. Isn't that a shame? Isn't that? Oh, I've been mistreated. Well, so was Jesus. He was mistreated. Neighbor, God doesn't want... the. Hatred and murder are friends. They're kinfolks. They belong together. You have to get murder, hatred out of your heart, or it becomes murder, you see. And when people that have that in their heart want to pray, God says, well, I can't answer that prayer. It would be against my moral nature to answer that prayer. And so there are prayers that are prayed that God cannot do anything about. Now, that's too bad, isn't it? So when you pray... Who are you that are praying? The only prayer that a sinner can really pray is, God, have mercy upon me, a sinner. That prayer will be heard. But if you're going to ask for help here and blessing there, Jesus has one word for you. Go and sin no more, lest a worse thing come upon you. He does not run a charity hospital for the devil. He wants you to live right. He wants you to enjoy salvation. He wants you to be what God wants you to be. Churches permitting sin to remain in them it's a church that's compromised, and it's a church that cannot get its prayers answered. Isn't that something? A church that cannot get its prayer answered. The minister is compromised. The deacon board is compromised. They play with sin because some man uh, gives to the church. He can own a brewery. He can own a liquor store. Almost all the liquor store owners are church members. Uh, he can own a tavern, be a church member. And the pastor, even though inside of him he knows it's wrong, he, he tolerates it because of a few dollars in a pan. Neighbor, those are prayers. That cannot, he can stand up there and pray like an angel. It won't go any higher than the ceiling for the simple reason that God cannot answer prayer over sin. Over sin. God cannot answer prayer over sin. God cannot answer prayer over unbelief. When you don't believe, then God cannot answer your prayers. You heard about the old woman that went to church and the preacher said, if you have faith, you can move a mountain with it. She came back home, kind of tickled and says, you know, I got a little hill out in front of my house here that keeps me from seeing the beach. If I had that thing moved, I could see the boats going by. So at night she says, oh, Lord, move that hill, please, like the preacher said. 
The next morning she looked out. It hadn't moved. It was still there. Oh, she says, it's just as I expected. Well, of course, it was just as she expected. You don't get it by saying it. You get it by believing it. It's believing. It's believing. It's believing. There are things that God cannot do. He cannot go over unbelief. If you don't believe it, he can't do it. The moral fiber of God says no. Don't matter what his mind says. His moral fiber says no when there's unbelief. There has to be trust. There has to be faith. And then anything can happen. All things are possible to them that believe. There are prayers which cannot be answered. And when a person has sin in his life, he cannot enter into the Holy of Holies and get the blessing that he wants simply because sin is in his life. A church cannot get prayers answered when we tolerate sin in the church and leave it to stay there and it feels comfortable there. Christ cannot deny the attributes of his holy nature. He cannot wink at sin. That's the reason he cannot answer prayer. It's prayed by a sinner. Some people can be hypocrites. Jesus cannot be one. And so when we come to him and we have not lived right and we have not served God properly, we cannot pray and think that God will answer our prayer when we have a life that's dissipated by sin. That is not possible. God wants to answer your prayers. If you're a sinner, the number one prayer is, have mercy upon me, a sinner. Forgive me of my sins and I'll serve you. That prayer will be answered. And then from there, you can get all kinds of prayers answered. That's the opening door to prayers answered. And you can get it too. Christ cannot hear the prayers of those who have an unwillingness to give up the things of this world. An unwillingness. You don't pay your tithes. You don't give liberally to God. You don't help the poor, the needy. You just have an unwillingness to give up the things of this world. Then you pray and nothing happens. Nothing happens. You love the things of the world and it just can't happen. I was preaching in Peru, South America, and a very important woman, American woman, there that didn't regard God very much, didn't come out to church very much either, uh, living in a foreign country, having a good time, visiting the embassy and going out on parties and so forth. And this, this woman got sick and her husband called for me to pray for her. And I sent back word that I was very busy teaching in a Bible college. And they sent back word, but she's a very important person. Her husband's an important man. Get over here and pray for her. I sent back word that I was very busy. God's work was very important. And I was teaching the Bible to the young people. So they sent back word and says, now listen. Says that she, this man is a superintendent. Says you get over here and pray for his wife. And so when I took a notion to go, I finally went over. I sat down by the bedside. And I said, you want to order Jesus around and you live a very careless life. You go to parties where you have no business being. You go out with people for fun and for fiesta that you have no business being with. And then when you get sick, you want to snap your finger and say, say, Jesus, hurry up here or I'll go to the hospital and get a doctor to do it if you don't. Well, I said, Jesus won't do that. I said, if you want to be healed, are you ready to confess your sins? He says, I am a missionary. What do you mean? I said, honey, it don't matter what you claim to be. Your record down here in this country shows that you are a socialite, having a gay time. And I said, you can't order Jesus around. And if I prayed, I'd be praying into emptiness. If you're ready to repent and to get right with God, he's ready to heal. She says, I'm ready. <laughs> Most people would have gone in and saved it over. And said, oh, Jesus, if it be your will, won't you heal? And got up and run out, she'd have gone off to the hospital. You see, you've got to be honest. She was not living right, even though she claimed to be a missionary. She was not the person that she should have been in that foreign land. She was not letting her testimony ring out for Jesus. She was playing with the wrong people, which was playing with fire. And she got in trouble and wanted to command Jesus. You can't do that. You first get right on the inside and that he can help you. You cannot, you cannot have an unwillingness to give up personal wrong. You've got to be willing to before Jesus can bless you. Our Lord who answers prayers cannot bless unconfessed sin. He can't do that. King Saul prayed. He offered a sacrifice unto God. 
but it was not accepted of the Lord. There was nothing there. It was a dead sacrifice because of a sinful heart, a heart away from God. God could not bless. God could not help. The rich man prayed for help in the New Testament, but he could not get help. His prayer was not answered. He wasn't right with God. He wasn't right with God. A rich young ruler in the New Testament prayed for eternal life. Lord, what must I have do to have eternal life? Who? Big stakes, eternal life. The Lord spoke to him. He saw where his heart was. He loved his riches. He loved his home. He loved the gay life. Jesus said, sell what you have. Give it to the poor. Come and follow me. Be a disciple of the Lord. Because of his riches, his security. He says, I can't do it. I don't want to follow you that bad. I won't do it. And the Bible says, sadly, he walked away from eternal life. He walked away from eternal life. His prayer could not be answered because he loved something more than he did God. He had wealth in front of him before God, and God couldn't get to him. And so God could not answer his prayers. Are you searching inside? It may not take a lot of wealth to get between you and God, but there are millions of people that are so wrapped up in a few commodities of this life that they can't get their prayers answered. God has said, give to this ministry. You haven't given yet. I've had friends that told me God told me to give $1,000, and I had it, and I didn't give it. Later, he said, now make it 2000 I had it, but I didn't give it. Finally, the Lord said, 3000 And I said, Lord, if I guess I better give it quick, or you'll go up higher. And they came and brought their love gift to God and said, the Lord commanded me to do this. Not so much that they should give it to this ministry, $3,000, but that they should obey God so that he could open up the true treasures of heaven, the true riches, so that he could open them up and bless them. Neighbors, God wants to bless you. He wants to help you, but he cannot help those who love the things of this world more than they love God. The rich young ruler walked away from eternal life. God could not answer Balaam's prayer. It was a great prayer. He looked at the children of Israel. He saw their dignity. He saw their well-being. He saw their security. He said, let my last end be like these. But it wasn't. Balaam died in a contradiction to his own prayer. He lived with the heathen, and he died with them on the battlefield. He died with them on the battlefield. You live, and you die the same. And you die where you live. He prayed a prayer. It could not be answered because inside of Balaam was wrong. He wanted to destroy Israel. He says, give them the heathen girls. And let them intermarry, and you will damage the whole nation. You'll turn the whole nation over to heathenism. Give them the pagan girls. And he died away from God. To be answered, prayer needs several things. It needs a vision, like Isaiah had. Isaiah had a vision of the holiness of God. And he said, even my lips are unclean. And an angel of God came and took the fire from the altar of God and purged his lips that they were clean. If you want your prayers answered, have a vision of the holiness of God. You can get your prayers answered. If you want your prayers answered, have experience like Job. Job said, there was a time when I had just heard of God. But he said, through my experiences, I have seen God face to face. Neighbors, hearing about God and knowing God are two different things. You can get your prayers answered when you know him and you know that you know him. How do you get your prayers answered? By revelation. Like John on Patmos. He fell as a dead man. He had seen, he had seen the majesty and the glory of God. All human beings should know this. God saw 
Mother Eve in the Garden of Eden with her fingers clenching the forbidden fruit. God saw it. God saw it. Her blaming it on the serpent and her blaming it on her husband, it was of no value. God saw it. God saw Cain as he raised his strong arm with a big stone in it to crush the head of his own brother and destroy his life. God saw it. When he said, Cain, where is thy brother? He didn't have to ask him. He was only trying to get a repentance out of him, which he didn't get. When Achan, among the people of Israel, stole the golden wedge in the Babylonian garment, and he took the golden wedge, imagine, a wedge of gold worth a lot of money, and hid it inside of his bosom. God saw it. Any prayer he prayed, would have gone nowhere because God saw the spirit inside of the man that he was a thief and God could not answer his prayers. It was not possible for God to answer his prayers. He had to die for his sins. He was stoned, caused his whole household to die because of his sins. What a terrible, terrible thing. King David finally discovered that God knew all about him. God saw him on the housetop with his adulterous eyes looking over into the neighbor's yard. God saw it. God didn't have to be told about it. God took his prophet and sent him over there. So tell him about a man that had a, a hundred lambs and one that had one. And then when a friend came, he took the neighbor's one lamb and cooked it, kept his hundred. And David, having a righteous spirit, says, let me see that man. Let me see that man. I'll make things right. And the preacher said, you're that man. You had plenty of wives, and you stole the one the man had next door to you. You stole his wife. God couldn't answer his prayers. The only prayer that God could answer was when he says, oh, God, be merciful to me, a sinner, and forgive me. That's the only prayer that God could answer of David. And the sword never left his house. His own son had a divided kingdom and lost 10 of the 12 tribes. His own son. Troubles and sorrows came. They originated with a man named David who sinned. It seemed a very simple little thing to steal a man's wife and five minutes commit adultery with her, send her on her way, and have hell for the next 3,000 years. You better learn that God is a great God and a good God, and a clean God, and a holy God, and you better know it. You'll find it out one day to your own sorrow. God cannot answer the prayers of sinful people. You can pray, but God cannot answer those prayers. God saw Judas as he reached to clutch those 30 pieces of silver. He put them in the very bag that Jesus had held and counted the two or three pieces they had and he filled his bag up. He'd only had four or five at the most at any time. Now he had 30. His bag was full. God saw it. There are conditions upon which prayer cannot be answered. They all have to do with sin. God can answer your prayers if you'll be honest and sincere and holy and clean. May I bless you. Bless my neighbor right now Prepare them so their prayers can be answered. Cleanse them so that your prayers will be answered. I believe you for the great miracle of God. Let the prayers be answered in Jesus' name. I believe you for the miracle of God to cleanse and to forgive in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. God bless you. My spirit reaches out to you. There are people tremendously wanting answered prayer. Love God and serve God, and he'll answer your prayers. There are several ways that you can enjoy this lesson all over again. By videotape, you can have it and enjoy it. On your own TV set, you can play it. You can have it by audio tape. 
it will come to you with one other lesson, this one and one more, two lessons on prayer for just $5. Be sure and name the lesson that you are seeing today, what prayer cannot do, and then order it. And you will receive one other lesson besides. Send $5 to LSEA, L -E -S -E -A, Post Office Box 12, South Bend, Indiana, zip code 46624. You can also get a syllabus of teaching where all 20 lessons are in syllabus form for teaching. In fact, if you get the video or even the audio, it would be very good to take the, uh, the teaching syllabus and teach it first and then show it or hear it, and then you would be able to give a great lesson. If you wish to join our school of continuous learning, you can take these lessons. We'll grade your papers and give you a certificate for completing the entire 20 lessons. Join up with us. We want to be the largest correspondent school in the world. We'd be delighted to have you to join us immediately. Learn the great truths of the Word of God together. We hope that you will. And also, join us as a partner, please. Be a partner with us in the greatest way of giving out the gospel there is by television. Why don't you help me win a million souls to Jesus through these teachings? I'd be so glad for that. You can win a million souls for Jesus. Why don't you join the club? It's only $10 a month. Let me hear from you immediately. And let's join together and win our neighbors and our world to the Lord Jesus Christ. I'll be praying for you. I want you to be praying for this ministry. I want you to know there are prayers that God cannot answer. But most prayers, all prayers, prayed by good people, their prayers can be answered. May your prayers be answered. So beautiful having you with us in our study today. Be with us in our next study that's coming up, please. I trust that you will. And until that time, keep smiling, keep looking up, keep rejoicing in God. Let the Lord Jesus Christ ever smile upon you and keep you. And for his blessings upon you, Shout his praises. Thank you. Goodbye now. Today's teaching on prayer has been recorded on audio cassette for your convenience of listening at home, work, or in your car. You can obtain a list and order form of all Dr. Sumrall's teachings on audio cassette by writing to Dr. Lester Sumrall at Post Office Box 12, South Bend, Indiana, 46624. The production of today's teaching was sponsored by I Believe in Prayer was produced through the facilities of the Lassie Broadcasting Network.